Hello and welcome to another video. In this video, we're going to be continuing on with the TypeScript line 75 and we're going to be doing maximum product subarray. So in this problem, you're given an integer array nums and you want to find a subarray that has the largest product and you want to return the product and the test cases are generated so that the answer will fit in a 32 bit integer. And so here we have the numbers. And in this case, the longest, so it has to be a consecutive subarray, right? So the answer would here would be this one right here, two and three, and that would give us six. And then in the second example, we don't want to, well, we can't really get a, a positive number, right, anywhere. We can only get negative numbers, like we can get negative two, negative one. So our answer here would actually be zero. And so I wanted to go over like a more complex example because I don't think this one shows it well. So we're actually gonna do this problem over here gonna focus on this one and we're gonna blow it up a bit like this and this is the one we're gonna focus on and this is very similar to Kadane's algorithm where you're trying to get the maximum sum of a subarray except the difference is that if we have a number so in Kadane's algorithm you're, you're keeping track of like your current number that you're storing but the problem with that is let's say we're storing a number like like our biggest number is like 20 or something and then we and then we the next number we have is like negative four. The problem with that is now we get a negative number. So we actually want to store two numbers. We want to store the biggest number and the smallest number possible in a consecutive uh, series. And I'll show what that means exactly. Because if we have twenty and we have negative four and we have negative eighty, that's not a good result. But if we also had some negative number, like let's say negative sixteen, in Kadane's algorithm you wouldn't store this. But here we will, because then when you multiply that by a negative number, you get a really big positive number. So because you can multiply by ne positive and negative numbers, you actually want to keep track of the biggest number stored so far and the smallest number stored so far and the result. So I'm going to kind of walk through this and explain what I mean. So essentially, we're still going to have a result. So let's just say we have some result and we're going to set our result equal to negative infinity. And we're actually going to initialize our, let's just call it like big to equal one and our small to equal one. And so now we're gonna be doing similar thing to Kadane's essentially. What we are going to do is we're gonna go number by number and we're gonna see like what's the biggest number we can make and what's the smallest number we can make and we're gonna store those. So let's just start off over here. So we have two. And essentially what we're gonna do is we're gonna try to multiply our two by our biggest number so far and our smallest number so far, both of those and we are gonna store the biggest number and the smallest number. So in this case, big and small are both one. So the biggest number is gonna be two and the smallest number is gonna be two. And keep in mind this, this big and small number has to use this new number, right? Because we only care about subarrays that use this new number because we're gonna try to build on that subarray, right? We need a contiguous subarray. So we need to use this number. So it's either gonna be this number by itself or this number by multiplied by this or this number multiplied by that. That's gonna be the three choices. And we can update our result to be the maximum of result and our big number. So in this case, our result gets updated to two. Okay, now we go to negative five and we try to do the same thing. We say like, what's the biggest number we can make and the smallest number we can make? Well, the biggest number we can make so for big, we can multiply our number by negative five, in which case we'd get negative 10, or we can just start over with a negative five, right? And for the biggest number, what would we, what would we want? Right? Like the numbers we can make are negative 10 and negative five. Well, for the smallest number, that would be negative 10, right? Out of all these we can make. But the biggest number is gonna be negative five. And neither of these is bigger than the result, right? So we're not gonna care about that. So we're gonna go to the next number. So for three, we do the same thing. The biggest number we can make with three is a few choices, right? It's either going to be three by itself or three multiplied by the big number, which is negative 15, or three multiplied by the small number, which is negative 30. So the big number in this case is three The small number in this case is negative 30. Okay. And now our result gets updated to be the big number because the big number is bigger than our result now. Okay. Now we go to one. So 
So for one with all these numbers, let's actually get rid of some of this. So for one, the biggest number we can make with all these numbers is three. The smallest number we can make is still negative 30, right? So this just basically stays the same for one. So we can keep going. Now we reach negative four and this is kind of like where we get to an interesting part. So for negative four, we can make what numbers can we make? Once again, we can make negative four or we can make negative four multiplied by the big number, which is negative 12 or negative four multiplied by the small number, which is 120. And so here, our big number is 120, right? So 120 and our small number stay, actually, remember we have to use the negative four, so we can't like pick this. So our small number here is actually negative 12. So negative 12 and our result gets updated to be 120. Okay. Now with zero, since we have to use zero, our big and our small are gonna be uh, both zero, right? We have to use zero, so zero multiplied by anything is zero. So now these pretty much just get updated to be zero. So zero, zero. Okay. And we can get rid of this. And now we have negative 10. And since we had zero before, now our big and our small are gonna be um, negative 10, right? So this is gonna be negative 10, negative 10, because the only number we can make is negative 10. Because we have to use this number, right? So it's gonna be negative 10 multiplied by zero or negative 10. So now we have negative 10, now we go to two. And let's take a look. So for two, we have what numbers can we make? We make two, we can make negative 20. And that's pretty much it, right? Because these are both negative 10. So our big number will be two and our small number will be negative 20. And then finally for this last number here, we can make eight, we can make 16 and we can make negative 160. And so this will be negative 160. Let's actually just do this. So negative 160, and this one will be 16. And so the biggest number we found was 120, and we can kind of see, like, going through this array, like, the biggest number is going to be this one right here, right? So let's just make sure we did the math here, right? So this is uh, 20 times 6, which is 120, right? So that is correct. And so now you see why you need to store the biggest and the smallest number, right? Because we had a really big, we had a really big small number here, or a really negative number, right? Like we were storing negative 30 here. And if we didn't store that, if we just stored our biggest number possible, then we would only have stored three and we would have actually missed our best solution. So that, that's why you have to store the biggest and the smallest number because at any time you can multiply a really negative number by another negative number and that would give you a really big positive number. So you don't have to do this if your numbers are only positive, but if your numbers are negative, that is basically the change you make. You just store the biggest number possible and the smallest number possible, and you keep doing that. And then at every iteration, you just update your result to be the maximum of the result and the biggest number, and that will give you the solution. So it's Cadenz with like a twist. Okay, and now we can actually code it, it's full screen. So we're gonna have a result. We're gonna set that to equals negative infinity. We are gonna store the like big number and we're gonna set that equal to one, small equal to one. You could also set them equal to the first number in one and nums, same thing. Okay, now we are going to loop through nums. So we can just say for let i equal zero, i is less than, you could also do let i of nums, either one length plus, we are going to say const num equals nums i because we're going to be reusing that. And now essentially you can write this one of two ways. You can either make a temporary variable because the thing is you need to actually like get these numbers and then you need to set the big and the small equal to them. And so you could get all of these numbers or you could just get one of them and set it equal to a temp. And I'm just going to use array destructuring here. So what I'm going to say is I'm going to say big small equals 
math.max. So the big number is going to be the max of all these numbers. So it's going to be big times. Remember, we have to use our new number. So big times num, small times num for the number itself. And for the second one, it's going to be the same thing, but now it's going to be math.min. And if you don't use a ID structuring, you need to use a temp because if we set big equal to this, then when you calculate, when you use the big in your calculation for small, the big would have been updated, right? So either one works. So then it's just going to be the same thing. Big times num, small times num, or the number itself. Okay. And now we simply need to update the result. So that part is going to be math.max of the result and big. And finally, at the very end, all we have to do is return the result. Um, and let me see. Yeah, I think that's actually, I think this should work for zeros as well. Because if we get a zero, these will both zero out. And then in the next iteration, um, yeah, they will just both equal the number or something like that. Okay, so let's try to run that. Okay, and you can see pretty efficient solution. And for, for these like uh, no event solution is gonna be as efficient as you get in terms of space and all that stuff. A, it's not super uh, consistent and B, it's literally just gonna come down to like how many local variables you use. So it's not a big deal because everyone's space is going to be a one for like the most efficient solution. So let's go through the time and space. So for Cadanes, you're essentially looping through your uh, like array one time. So that's going to be O of N. We're just looping one time. And for the space, like I said, we're only using local variables. We are only using this res big, small um, and doing array destructuring. This is an array of two elements and this is only uh, one local variable as well. So that's going to be O of one. But yeah, I think this problem is definitely kind of cool to learn like the trick of, you know, storing two things for a product and realizing that you can't just store the biggest number stored so far because if at any point your number can turn negative, you're going to want to store both. And yeah, I think that's actually going to be it for this problem. So hopefully you liked it. And if you did, please like the video and subscribe to the channel. And I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.